All right, welcome to the uh, next video on grooming fur. Um, this one we're primarily going to be going over these attributes. Um, hopefully you've kind of decided if you're going to be using volume fur here, um, if you're going to be using um, primitive fur here. Um, just depends on which way you want to go. Um, our fur is going to be not um, be quite a bit longer. I have it set to volume right now is what we're going to be working with. Um, also, I said I was going to be going over uh, these settings here are for globals in the last uh, video, so I need to do that now. Uh, so our calculate area values per fur description is going to say um, if we set up our patches kind of like we have here, um, where they're kind of equal in size. Um, per fur description, if we have, a, say I think we had 20,000 density, um, it's going to say every one of those uh, patches that that fur description is applied to is going to have a density of 20,000. If you had this set to globally, um, what that would do is say the largest patch would have 20,000 and one half that size would have like 10,000. Um, equalizer maps are generated at render time. Um, they're not necessarily something that you need to carry around with you um, everywhere you go. Where they will be stored is in render data under fur for equalizer maps. Also, any attribute maps that we paint that I'll show uh, probably in this video uh, will be stored here. Um, these are those are like baldness and things like that. Fur files, fur images. Um, is what I'll talk about uh, right now. <laughs> There we go. Um, these are generally only used by uh, my software. I'm not going to spend a lot of time going into my software. Um, just know uh, when it, it actually will render um, the fur together um, in the frame. You can uh, choose to have it composite the fur in the frame or uncheck that so it, it'll keep the file separate. Uh, it'll also create a Z depth pass. Also, um, you can have it t keep the temporary files. Um, or keep uh, the fur images also so you can composite it later if you want as well. Um, you can uncheck that and keep the fur images there so it'll render just the geometry and you'll have the fur files all ready to composite. Um, these down here disable my rendering uh, batch only. Again these are also um, only used for my software as well. Um, and then also down here um, you have uh, places for reference paths and then where we went over earlier for, to change between uh, hair primitive and volume. So now we're going to get into um, our actual fur description here. Um, note that any of these that we have settings for here or attributes we're also going to have down here in the details tab. I think the details tab is like um, like a randomizer for these settings up here which is great if you're trying um, what you're going to want to use um, to get a natural look and, and what you're doing. Um, great ones to have this on are in, in collar um, maybe a little bit even in spec length is a great one. Um, also um, clump is another good one to have this in um, and I'm going to go through uh, some of these right now. Um, we can we could increase our global scale up here. Um, we could also uh, increase our length here, which which I'll do like th like that. Um, we'll take this to like 1.5, but we're going to add in a large amount of um, amplitude on our uh, noise amplitude here. Um, noise frequency, that's going to be how often it occurs. Um, it's th th those will be this, you'll have these on all of these, um, even like clump frequency. Um, we'll have a frequency for that as well, um, which I'll go through those. Um, your inclination, polar, and roll, those are going to be um, your inclination is how much it's going to lie down as opposed to how much it's going to stand up. Um, your roll is how it's going to rotate around um, the normal of where it's applied to. Um, the polar is going to twist it along that. Um, 
base opacity and tip opacity is how much light is going to be allowed through these hairs. Um, there's also um, base width and tip width as well. Um, if you want like a really soft, um, softer look on your uh, fur, you can drop the tip width down. Um, you can also um, lower the tip opacity some if, if you want. Um, there's also base curl and tip curl, which are exactly what they say they are. Um, you can add in a little bit of tip curl if you would like. It'll either curl one way or you can drop it down into the negative to have it curl the other way. It's depending on what kind of look you're going for exactly. Um, scraggle. Um, scraggle frequency and scraggle correlation. That's going to be how messy the fur is, how um, kinked the, the in individual hairs are and then um, scraggle correlation you can use that to give a nice wavy look um, with a low scraggle frequency um, and a higher correlation um, to give that nice um, look to it. Um, to get that and not make it look like jagged you can increase your segments and that'll make it look quite a bit smoother. Um, clumping is um, very important when it comes to fur um, this is one of the more important settings. Um, what you have here is how much of your fur is clumping, um, the, the frequency of the clump, whether there's going to be fewer larger clumps or a lot of smaller clumps, and then your clump shape is going to be how convex or concave the shape of the hairs in that clump clump together. Um, a, a good way to like test this for yourself is to take it out uh, long. Um, you can also, um, let's say if we turn up our clumping here, we'll say that all of our hairs clump together, whereas um, you know a lesser amount of the hairs clump together. You can turn this up and you can adjust uh, the clump shape. You can see how that will be more con or uh, more spread out or um, more piked, spiked together. Um, this is useful um, if you're going for like a, a wet look, porcupine, spiked hair, wh whatever um, the look you're going for, you can do a lot of cool things with this. Um, also, I didn't mention specular uh, collar. Um, this is how you're going to change how much spec you're, uh, you're receiving and your spec sharpness um, is going to, you, you can adjust this um, a higher specular sharpness um, is going to give you a tighter spec make it look like um, like give the look of like wet fur for example as opposed to a lower one um, base amp and, and tip ambient collar are like an add to the collar um, I, I typically don't use these um, I have read about them being used I don't um, because you can get collar in places that you normally shouldn't have it um, in areas that should be dark, like I said, it's an ad. Um, and then you have base and tip collar, which you can plug in any type of maps that you want there. And you can um, actually, if you, if you want, you can select um, like all of your patches, for example. And it would be under rendering, lighting, and shading. You can go to transfer maps. And you can load these maps in into the target meshes, all of your patches. And then the source mesh you would load in your uh, base geometry. So you have your patches here, you have your base um, arm geometry here that has your texture on it. You're going to want to transfer a diffuse map. You, if you want to remove a map you can just click remove map. Um, this will show you which ones you're transferring. You can do multiple at a time, what file format you're going to use, and then the pathway of where you're going to save that to. And that's going to sample the entire surface. Um, if you have a lot of high contrasting collars in the surface, um, it, it, I've seen it um, sampled together and kind of do a blend. You can also um, take like your texture into Photoshop and do like a stamp. Um, of like the particular part that you're wanting and plug then that into the tip collar 
um, or the base caller you can also um, adjust the, the value down or the levels and plug it into the base value as well typically the bottom you will put a darker collar on it helps add to the believability of um, uh, the self shadowing and uh, like darker at the base from uh, the ambient occlusion as well Um, obviously that's not the look that we're going for so we're going to um, not drop our scraggle frequency we're going to um, drop that clump down some we're not going to need that much with it um, also our clump shape is a little bit overkill here um, see so we'll have uh, larger clumps here something along those lines which you can adjust it um, it's something that you'll want to test these um, do some render tests as you're going along with it um, to, to get the look that you're going for and again um, down here in your um, details you're going to definitely want to have um, at least a little bit of uh, randomization to these as well um, if not it's just going to look too uniform all the way throughout um, so spend some time um, getting the look that you're going for. Um, I'm going to do the same. And um, so that way you, you kind of have where you're wanting to be at with the fur in general. Um, you'll notice when you test in your renders that you, you'll have along these patches like this real harsh line of fur that, you, that you're generally you're not going to want. Um, you can select your patch and select your fur and just isolate your selection so we're just looking at those and it updates a lot quicker while we're working and I can grab that and come up here to fur and this is what I was talking about earlier you can paint your fur attributes just like with your paint weight tools and whatnot um, there's all the different uh, settings that we just looked at and I can paint these this is um, it's generally normalized in a zero to one um, you can paint these up or down just like you would with any uh, other weights um, one that we're going to paint here that's uh, the two that are useful I sh should say um, for getting like a tapered look with uh, the edges of fur like this is painting in a combination of length and baldness um, if you want to you can take length um, just real quick we can just drop it down to zero and paint some of this out along the edge And again, um, the fur feedback, um, if you, you don't have a lot of hair and you can't really see what is happening here, um, the fur feedback node, um, you can increase that while you're working. And then um, if you need more to be, to be able to see um, what, what you're doing here, um, you can see uh, the shape of the clump as well. Now that we're here a little bit closer, um, how it's clumping together, um, the shape of it. But once you have painted that out, you don't want to leave it just like that. Jump over to smooth, smooth it down a couple times, and then just do the same with baldness. And that'll help give you a nice tapered look of uh, any areas that you, you want the fur to kind of blend in. Um, anytime that you're adjusting these things or you paint maps or and, and such like that, um, you're going to want to grab uh, that fur description and you're going to want to uh, bake. Um, always remember to bake um, when you're doing this um, or you could um, potentially uh, lose some work. Um, so when you bake that, that's going to save um, these maps. Um, that map I just painted, um, now that when I bake that, that was just, um, it's going to be saved out for me. So um, to go through here, uh, get the look that you're going for, um, and in the next video we're going to pick it up. Uh, I'll, I'll show you with the, the settings that I used um, to get the, the look I was going for and a, uh, a render of that. And then I'm going to show you how to apply uh, hair to it and uh, the settings for that to uh, make the fur dynamic. So we'll see you next video.